So that's kind of cool. But I want to go over what the message is. It's right here where even when things seem confusing, like right now with coronavirus and being locked down and quarantined and the economy shut down and, you know, people sick and not just from the coronavirus, but from many illnesses, why would God allow suffering? And it's that we don't understand the whole plan. If we try to have the world revolve around us, we are going to be frustrated and we're not going to get the ultimate prize. And that is getting to heaven to be with Jesus. So we're not meant to be loners. God has these things in our lives, in the world, so that others and at times ourselves can be God's hand hands and feet here on the planet right now we don't do anything to prove ourselves worthy for heaven we accept god's gift but we're also thankful and we give back so god's divine plan sometimes unfolds quickly in a matter of days or a school year but oftentimes it's longer than that maybe a decade maybe a lifetime where you get god's wisdom instead of just our human knowledge so uh, think about that as you see problems in the world that's our opportunity to step forward and and to show love to other people because god is love and therefore we're called to be loved as well so uh, moving on you guys are doing a great job of doing the attendance for the day but how are you doing with getting any late work turned in it's up to you to stay on top of your assignments, get the help that you need. I'm available every day on chat, even though we don't have class, uh, by email as well. And get the help that you need for any makeup work. And the story of plastic was really a, a great video that we were given special privilege to have our own personal viewing. It expired a few hours earlier than I expected. I'm trying to get that reopened up with the maker of that video. So stay tuned for that. If you missed it, then I am going to make that available or give you a makeup research project. So I will be reaching out to you. And if you've completed the video, then do item number five on our agenda. That is a required survey for the video because we were given special access to this. It only takes a couple of minutes, so take care of that if you have not already done so. If you haven't seen the video, then don't do the survey yet until you see the video. How about number six? Have you completed that? Um, I have several students that logged into Lab Exchange but did not do the assignment. And so you had to join our class and you had to go into the assignment, which was a look at coronavirus, four short three-dimensional views, exterior, interior, how the virus gets itself into our cells, what it does to our body and our body's response. Uh, all of those were just clickable and you read the information on the screen. There wasn't a test for you to do, but you had to click through the four different 3D views. And then it tells you that, you know, you had to click next, 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 and then finish. And I've updated Aries as of like last Friday or Saturday morning. And, and so uh, that was like a, a lab grade. So don't miss out on that. If you needed help with it, I posted a video here at the agenda as well as at the assignment itself. And then we're going to look at number seven today, Fighting Infectious Disease. This is a textbook, Chapter 35, Section 3, and it is due tomorrow for you guys. I'm showing you the forensic science because I'm recording this video, and there may be a few forensics people here. Um, one thing that... Uh, I skipped over is the STEM project. It's also number five here for forensics. All science classes do a STEM project. My STEM project has been postponed to May 18th, and I'm going to give everyone biology and forensics 
more information later this week. So I'm working on a couple of other individual options for you instead of just being in that lab group. So stay tuned for that. So fighting infectious disease is something that is very timely, isn't it? Uh, we looked at, in biology class, the uh, dozen or so different types of cells in our body that fight infections of viruses and bacteria. And so we're continuing that right here. <laughs> I'm outside and my, my dog is barking. Hold on a second. I will open up, I'll open up the video uh, conference that we have here and um, maybe introduce you to uh, Roxy at the end. Okay, so uh, we understand quite a bit about viruses and our body's immune response to viruses and uh, maybe you know a few things but don't quite understand what a vaccination is. Are there any other ways of fighting a virus? That's what we're gonna go over here with the worksheet. So tried to make it easy for you with the page numbers where you could find information, but I'm gonna quickly go over it as well. This started a couple of centuries ago. Over in England, there was a physician, Edward Jenner, and he noticed that if someone came down with the disease of cowpox, which was pretty, uh, pretty bad, but not as bad as this second disease called smallpox. So if someone got cowpox, it was shown that they wouldn't come down with smallpox, which that one is pretty deadly. You can die from it. You can uh, be disfigured, paralyzed. And, and so it was a real big problem. If you know history in America, the English brought over smallpox to the indigenous population in America. And that's really what wiped them out in, uh, in large numbers. It wasn't the cowboy Indian fights, it was the infections that we brought over. So infectious diseases have been around for a long time. And also coronaviruses have been around We'll talk about that. This is called a new novel coronavirus. And instead of just calling it a coronavirus, I mean, there's dozens of them. This one specifically is called COVID-19. And we're gonna talk about how it's similar and different to uh, others throughout history. So back to uh, this English physician, he did a little research on a human subject. I don't know if it was a relative of his, but uh, wow, we don't do this today. It has to go through long testing periods, usually about 10 years. So if you're following this in the news, they're trying to find a vaccination for coronavirus, COVID-19. And they say, normally this takes a decade. We're trying to speed it up to 12 to 18 months. So how are we going to open up the economy again? Some are saying we can't safely do so until everyone is vaccinated against this. Well, that's going to take a year and a half to two years. There's no way we're going to be in lockdown. But you're going to hear people like, everybody has to get vaccinated. You're going to have to carry a card around that shows you've been vaccinated. That, or we'll implant a little chip under your skin and your hand and you'll have to like pass it by a reader. I mean, these are some pretty draconian type of full societal control by governing bodies. Um, there's gonna be a lot of pushback on that, right? Some people don't even believe in vaccinations for things like smallpox and polio. Um, and so we're seeing a reemergence of some of these because many groups of people think that uh, getting a vaccination is harmful or deadly as well. So. There's two views on that. You can do a little research on it. Maybe even make it one of your extra credit assignments if you haven't done one yet. So uh, what he did in this picture, he took 
the sickness out of someone with cowpox, made a cut in James' arm here, and then put that disease right into the wound of this young child. He came down with a mild case of cowpox, and then he did something quite dangerous. If, if it didn't work out, uh, it would have been a different story, but now injecting or putting smallpox disease in his arm after he gave a little waiting time for his body to respond to the cowpox, James did not come down with smallpox. So he developed a protection against it. This was the beginning of vaccinations. And isn't it interesting that the Latin word for vaccination means cow so they took the cow pathogen and put it into james and that allowed his immune system to recognize a foreign invader in his body our immune system with its white blood cells and there's a couple of dozen of cells that our immune system is built on it will build a fighting force against what gets invaded into our body and so because smallpox is so closely related to the proteins of cowpox that the immune response to cowpox was sufficient to fight off smallpox. So pretty cool. There's so much research going on right now to see how similar COVID-19 is without other coronaviruses. They're, they're manipulating the proteins and trying to figure out, hey, if we inject this into a body is our immune system going to build up the fighting force against that protein? Is that the trigger? So if you stay in touch with the news, you're going to hear a lot of talk about vaccinations. And this is where it all started a couple hundred years ago over in England. We have two immune responses, one active and the second passive. Now what I've just been describing is an active immunity. When you get a vaccination, that is putting the virus to purposefully into your body in, in a vaccination, or if you just encounter it just with normal everyday touching things, then this is going to stimulate your immune system. So this is called serology and you'll study it later. Uh, my forensics class understands that serology is when you have a fighting immune response to the foreign proteins called antigens. And this is what your active immunity is. It takes a couple of weeks of being introduced to this pathogen for your immune system to immobilize. It has an immediate response within hours or days, but it takes a couple of weeks to build up what are called memory B cells, memory T cells, and these are going to stick around inside of your bloodstream in the plasma, not the red blood cell part, but in the watery white blood cell area for your entire life. Your body remembers every pathogen that it's had before. They say you'll never get the same sickness twice because your immune system should, if it is fully immobilized, then it is going to fight it immediately when you encounter it again. Because it takes several days, a week, in order for the virus to replicate in large enough numbers to do harm. If your immune system is already right there with its fighting force, it knocks it out. That's why you get the flu shot at the beginning of the flu season, like in the fall, so that if you encounter the virus later, and they, they kind of have an idea which one is the most prevalent out there, then your body is going to have the immunity for it. So that's an active immunity. Are you also following in the news? Some people's lives are being saved when they're on the brink of death from COVID-19 when they get the antibodies of someone who has beaten the virus and now they're back to health and inside their plasma they have antibodies, they take those out of the, the survivor and they put it in the gravely sick person. And so it like gives them a, an immediate boost of their immune system and it's temporary because that sick person, when when their immune system starts to come back, it's going to recognize the antibodies from that survivor as foreign too and start fighting that. 
So uh, this is something that I, uh, every time I'm catching stories about how the, the virus is right now, they always talk about, we're working hard on a vaccine. Uh, look, we're saving people by giving the antibodies from one person to another. So uh, we're living through this right now. And, and it's been around since we've understood uh, our immune system. This page right here, we're, we're in lockdown because the public health officials, our government, the World Health Organization for the world saying this is what we should do, quarantine. Everyone should, healthy and unhealthy, should be isolated uh, to stop the spread of this. We need to make sure that our grocery stores are safe, our food and water supplies. Let's promote a vaccination. Uh, so all of this is public health measures to try to help people. Now, this is nothing new. Uh, viruses, epidemics, regional uh, epidemics, global pandemics have happened before, but not on this scale because we're now 8 million. The last time we had something this serious was 100 years ago when the population was like 2 billion. So we travel a lot easily with airplanes and cars and cruise ships now than ever before, so things spread much more quickly. But these infectious diseases have been here on the planet, but now with uh, large populations, it, it needs to be handled in different ways. Are there medicines for viruses? The quick answer is no. Antibiotics are only for bacterial infections, not for viruses. I'm sure you or somebody in your family was brought to the doctor when you were sick, younger, and uh, trying to find out if there's anything that they could do for you to help you get better. And many times you go there and they go, you know, there isn't anything we can do, so just go home, get rest, make sure you get enough sleep, enough fluids, and eat healthy foods with vitamins and minerals because your immune system will handle this on its own. Now, if you're having to pay a $200 bill or something for the doctor to tell you that, usually you'd go, well, just give me antibiotics, you know, and, and then I can get well. Well, antibiotics are only for bacterial infections. There are now some drugs that are called antiviral drugs. They're not going to kill the virus, but they're going to boost your immune system or they're going to make it a less friendly environment for the virus itself so your immune system can do its job. But uh, there's nothing uh, drug-wise that can like kill the virus. That's our immune system. Why are we having these new novel coronaviruses? They, they've probably been around, but we haven't encountered them because we haven't been in that environment. So as the population increases, when uh, I was born, the population was like 5 billion, and now we're 8 billion. It's going to go up to 9 billion in another 10 years and maybe higher. So where do these humans go? We go in areas we haven't been before. Cut down some of the tropical jungles, and now you might have the virus go into an animal and then into humans. So maybe into a bat first or exotic animal trade. So that's what you're seeing here, changing interaction with animals and with our environment. And then, as I mentioned, some people don't believe in vaccination. So we eradicated, uh, got certain things under control like polio, but now people stop getting vaccinated when they're younger because some individuals do get harmed by the vaccination itself. And so now you have many people... Uh, Go into schools, public schools require vaccinations, but uh, maybe uh, they believe that they shouldn't get vaccinated. So this is something that we see, right? So misusing medications that should be used. And so this is, this is where we're at. Uh, this is how we end up getting re-emergent diseases and new novel coronaviruses. The last part of this worksheet is for you to go to this website and then compare another coronavirus called SARS. 
There's been a very, there's been a handful of coronaviruses over uh, the last 10, 20 years, and uh, this is one of the big ones recently before COVID-19. So you'll you'll learn a little bit more about uh, the virus as well by taking a look at that. All right, I'm going to move into open this up to you guys. I can uh, start my video, show you. You probably have heard heard me uh, in the outdoors here. I'm at my cabin, uh, kind of out in the desert, and my dog, she went inside. But uh, here we are, trying to enjoy some outdoors. You're supposed to get out, right, for exercise and also for some sunshine because your skin can make vitamin D. So make sure you're staying healthy. Don't get just stressed out and stay inside. I am going to turn you guys off mute. If you want to ask me like, How's everybody doing? Mm -hmm. If you would like to ask a question, I have you off mute. When will the projects be graded for the story of plastic? Um, I'm going to get that done in the next two days because progress reports are this week and I want to get that into the grade when I send it to the registrar. Okay. Good question. Well, thanks for joining me on the Zoom call today, and you guys get in touch with me uh, by chat or by email if you need help, okay? Okay. Thank you. Yep. Take care now. Thank you. Yep. Thank you.